humankind's cultures of Africa is awesome, let's smash straight back into this with a new wonder. Yes, we will. This is the new wonder in the game as part of humankind's cultures of Africa DLC, plus 20 faith and stability, plus 5% additional fame gain bonus. <laughs> wow. Alrighty, let's not muck around. Let's move through into arguably one of humankind's weak -er eras, the early modern, and choose the Maasai. The Maasai are an agrarian culture, so we're back at it again with another agrarian. What do they do? Well, for the rest of the game, we'll receive minus 25% population consumption on all cities. Basically, we'll eat 25% less food and grow faster. Our emblematic quarter provides plus five food per adjacent exploitation. This is probably the most basic, i.e. simple is what I should say, uh, quarter in the DLC. But let's see how strong it is. We also finally get another unit, right? As a style Swahili, we didn't really have a military unit to build. We didn't have a unique military unit. We had the sort of boat and transport. So nice to pick up this implacable ranged 43 strength Moran. Let's do it. And better late than never. We also have a little Swahili battle here with our ranged units. I have no melee units to defend them though, so this will be a really interesting test of their strength. I think this one is going to fall bait, and then the rest are going to hide, even as mounted units hiding behind the wall, as you can see, gives us heaps more strength over our opponent. So I'm going to shoot, shoot, and then do the old move, fire, and swap trick to take out another unit. Fantastic. Even though there are loads of juicy wonders on offer, I have to take the Great Mosque of Dijin. So let's grab it. Uh, we also have this district to look at, and spoiler alert, I think it's going to be way better than what everybody thinks it's going to be. Um, let's do it first. What have we got? 65 food. That is a spicy meatball, and we'll build one right next door for another 65. Bear in mind also that we're consuming 25% less food. These things are ludicrous. And we're about to have the most food in the world. <laughs> Fantastic. Of course, the other ability you will notice with these districts, like some that have followed before in this DLC, and a couple that were already in the game, like the English Stronghold, or the Mycenaean Unique District, uh, or any garrison, of course, any wonder, uh, we can place these anywhere. So we can really min-max their yields. Take a look at this. 46 food down here next to a random ass mountain where I would have never in a normal game built anything else. And actually, we're going to need to get these online quickly. You'll notice that all of my cities are relatively large, but they are actually way overgrown. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, let's queue up the Great Mosque of Dijin. Give it a nice spot so that we can really see it. Staring down and judging the pyramids down below it. And I will get everyone building it, but I might just give them a couple of turns to get their foodie districts online first, because uh, we really want to make sure that we keep the empire growing, and that's going to become harder and harder and harder as the game goes on. Uh, that one's actually really good, because this district will counter the stability loss, so I can build alongside the Swahili harbours essentially for free, or at least without fear of repercussions from stability. Uh, we could also consider yeeting some population out of our cities to build things, but I just don't think that's worthwhile. Oh, I do love these these new uh, these new little graphics. They are really they they really suit the feel of the game. I think that's very cool. It's very cool. Uh, speaking of very cool, we've got hamlets which behave a lot like uh, many of the unique districts that we're trying to build. So uh, that's quite fun. Speaking of trying to build, I might just smash them both out so that we can get on with the great mosque. Come on, great mosque. Okay, it's time for our. OG units to receive an upgrade. They will unfortunately just turn into knights next time, uh, which is fine, but I might just keep them around, see if we can turn them into some freaking Nigerian uh, armored vehicles or something later in the game. I think that would be really fun. Another continent conquered largely for its resources, which I'm just going to, as you know, splurge my excessive, absolutely excessive amount of influence on and build some harbor bridges to connect up to that island too. Not mad at that at all. And there's another island within the realm of my Cultures of Africa DLC control. You can see we are fencing empires in, but also now probably starting to benefit a little bit more from some of the earlier cultural traits that we've picked up that are feeding into this wonderful influence. Look at all these different little factors <laughs> building on it. 
I actually haven't been trading at all. And I'm pleased to report on the new trade overview. How good is this? That is fantastic. Plus eight stability on all cities. Plus more food on farmers quarter. This is much more transparent and open. Uh, it doesn't look like I have the ability to buy multiple things at once, but nice to see a better overview here. I like this a lot. Use that Swahili ability to quickly embark and disembark essentially for free, and our upgraded knights can sneak past the enemy. Run up to the top of this hill and claim another little island for our wonderful little island empire. Let's also maybe do a holy site, seen as that's only going to take one turn. <laughs> <laughs> and pick up a little bit of infrastructure in these cities as well, and you're gonna hopefully see them grow into something stupendously awesome. Hey, the Great Mosque of the Gene has been completed! Fantastic. Look at it go. We are getting some science from it, uh, thanks to our religion. But the real thing about this is now all of our fame is being multiplied by 5%. You'll notice the numbers look a bit odd. 100 becomes 105. <laughs> Incredible. It might not sound like a lot, but then you look at these gold ones. It's an extra 15. You go 5, 10, 15. What are we looking at? About an extra 30 per category completed. Seven categories, 210 fame. Over six errors, but not six errors. Could be three errors. <laughs> Why am I doing so much mental maths? Either way, I think it's probably quick maths off the top of my head. Could probably net you about 500 extra fame over the course of the game. Maybe even more if you're doing tech, if you're getting fame from research uh, technologies like uranium and that tech line along the bottom of the tree. Maybe up to, I don't know, a thousand bonus fame? Potentially even more than that. We'll find out. I think that the hamlets are arguably more important than any other district. Their yields, granted, are low, but... They provide an extra job and you can see that I'm just maxed out on all jobs, right? So I buy this Hamlet, boom, all of a sudden each category has an extra job, but they were instantly filled. Why? Because we already have 10 unemployed people in this city. So these Hamlets are very important. Another one, boom, now we're down to six unemployed people. This is good. Alrighty, early modern era behind us. Let's move through into what I argue is potentially the most powerful era in humankind due to a couple of outliers like the French and even the Germans, but we're not interested in them, we're interested in the Ethiopians. I'm excited for this one. They're a militarist, the only militarist. They provide plus five science on garrison. Now, unfortunately for us, they don't synergize well with how we've played this already. We've gone heavy on food and harbors to try and beeline towards a really powerful Swahili. We don't have a lot of garrisons, but, I'm excited to try out the Ethiopians. I actually do think they're a very powerful culture. I think their unit's gonna set them apart, and I think their defensive science gain's very strong for a militarist too. They're quite different, basically. Let's see what they do. Um, I see a lot of orange troops on my borders, and I do know that I benefit uh, greatly from fighting this era. So let's have a look and actually see. So here is the Amba. The Amba must be placed on a mountain. That is tricky. That is tricky. Luckily, we got a lot of mountains. So let me shoot them to the start. Okay, boom. So there we have one armbar down. Okay. Then maybe if I get a garrison next to it, just as a wee tester. And then another armbar. And then in the capital, let's perhaps start to buy out some units. And we'll try out these uniques against whatever this army is that's trying to sail across the sea here, shall we? And actually, it would be really useful if we had a city next to Harappa. So let's convert this into a new city. Seeing as we love garrisons, let's get some 20 stability 5 science garrisons around the Swahili Harbour. That is amazing. Uh, get the extra jobs ready as well with the Hamlet. What the Hamlet? Let's do it. The Umayyads would like to trade everything, and we'll do that with them, because as you can see, the game seems to be taking shape here. We have one ally that we're trading with, and then we have another person who's next door to us sending troops to our borders. I think there's a really powerful synergy with the Swahili harbours, or any harbour for that matter, uh, and the Ethiopian garrison, with the armbars online as well. Interested to see how that stacks and racks. So let me build a few more of these. And see what, wow, and see what we can do. Uh, they do also, of course, provide military bonuses to my units, and they slow down enemy units. So I should probably try and build it as close to my outposts as I can as well. The double 
Oh, the border territory double has the opportunity to provide some insane combat bonuses. And we've got another wonder. Machu Picchu, all other cities gain 50% food generated from Machu Picchu's city. I think this could be incredibly strong for this playthrough. So let's grab that and place it down in a high, in a, in a high food yielding city, likely one of our starting ones. So as a little test here, I built uh, multiple ambas in the same city. And while they do provide a really powerful effect to nearby units, right, or enemies, they reduce enemy movement and they buff me. So I'm getting sort of a buff around this one, I'm getting a buff around this one. You can see I'm creating a super strong defendable stronghold here as the Ethiopians. Now, the downside is that the district does not appear to stack. So plus five science on garrison, it does not provide me with plus 10 if I have two in the city. That would probably be a little overboard considering the other improvements that can be made to garrisons through city infrastructures. For example, plus five stability on garrison. Let's add that. Let's also add plus two vision to them as well. We don't have any of the civics that buff them, but I mean, now I'm getting 20 stability next to this harbor, five science, one food. It's not terrible. Is it the best though? Mm. Debatable, debatable. I think it's utility probably comes in play when I'm also fighting with it. And if I can't manage to also fight with it, I'm not sure if it's worth my time. Okay, so now that I've got the garrison infrastructure in place, they're providing plus 10, plus five. Again, it's still not great. <laughs> it's still not great and because I'm not using the military bonuses for them because nobody's attacking me because clearly I'm all powerful, almighty cultures of Africa, humankind, uh, ultimate game remove player. So <laughs> we're not really getting a lot of uh, versatility out of those, which is a shame, but I will keep building versatile districts in their place. Uh, alongside them like science districts and so on. And we'll, we'll just sort of push through them, build up our defenses. And then, of course, keep in mind the fact that the next era will be the last. And we're going to be playing as, hopefully, so long as no one else steals them, which they shouldn't, the Nigerians. Um, okay, we've just unlocked patronage. And because we were able to spread across the world uh, with the Bantu and then the Garamantes and so on, we've managed to hoover up a lot of luxuries, which means a lot of refineries. We've also built the Mosque of Dijin, so we're getting a little bit of bonus fame every time we build one of these, as well as, of course, just incredible impacts on our yields, our stability, which is our happiness and our influence. Everything is fantastic. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to actually fight anybody. That's not the end of the world, because I did muster a little bit of an army here. They could have a wee skirmish, perhaps, out at sea. Why not? Let's do it. Let's declare war against the English. Surprise! I'm here to fight. Uh, and I've got a couple of armies <laughs> ready to go in and have a wee punch. But first, I really do think, even though we're playing as a militarist, and I'll be swapping out of a militarist, it's a good idea for us to move through. We've built the districts. There's not a lot of other versatility or use case. So let's play as the final new culture in humankind's Cultures of Africa DLC. It's the Nigerians. What do they do? Well, I argue they bring this whole package back together. <laughs> Abundant Lands provides two industry per farmer on city and plus one farmer's slot per oil. Now, we've spent the whole game growing big cities. Now we can convert that into a little bit of extra industry. Nice to have. Oil refinery. This is the first culture in humankind to have, to my knowledge, a district that provides a strategic resource. The closest thing we've had is the Byzantines who love their horses. Now we have the Nigerians who love their oil. Plus 10 pollution, minus 10 stability, and we get an additional oil resource to exploit. That will, of course, come in handy for the MRAP vehicle. Now, finally, you don't need to worry about oil ever again. This puppy looks like the Australian unit, but maybe even better still. Let's do it. Nigerians, baby. Oh yeah, we're off. Cool, so we'll scare those units off as our first move as the Nigerians, and then start to move in our troops from last era, and just see if we can pick up, I don't know, like a couple of territories. We could ransack this and take it into ours. We're essentially just being a little bit of an opportunist here and trying to take advantage of an already advantageous situation. Okay, so they've made landfall and started to pillage some horses, which is kind of annoying. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly train some dudes with guns and we'll deal to that. 
army wages. Paid wages, in fact. Here, you can see we get plus five stability on our garrisons. One of the civics, there's a few, that will help us just try and buff the Ethiopian district. We should have got that a lot earlier, but actually, now you can see that the average one is providing 15 stability, five science, four, 15, five, and four. It's starting to get there. <laughs> but really, we're more interested in the Nigerian pa. So let's send the fleet that way. Let's start bringing some troops onto land. They want to pillage me. I will show them what pillaging looks like. And part two of our absolute patronage fiesta is building more of these manufactories. We got whale poop. We got pearls. We've got ebony. We've got everything. Okay, well, here's a city we can fight. Let's try out our only slightly out of date Ethiopian units and see how good they can do manually fighting a city with, by the looks, one melee unit to help them out. <laughs> Yikes. They're going to take some uh, front-loaded damage here if they're not careful. I'll block that spawn. That's super valuable. And I guess we just hide behind our one melee unit. Oh my god, these guys are so strong. 47 compared to 34 on the crossbowmen. And they get bonus combat strength against damaged targets. So they love to gang up on someone. Let's chuck that on auto. See what the AI will do. Looks like, oh no, they moved off that spawn. It's only one unit, so I'll let them away with it. And actually, this is going very well. So I'm happy for the AI to sort of, sort of auto-manage this. My only fear is this English longbowman standing back here in a fort. That's something that I don't know if I can take down. We might need to come back for wave two of this assault uh, with a second army. But... All in all, we seem to be holding our own there, so that's fine. And these guys are absolutely running away from my gunners, who are now going to run out and chase them down. <laughs> Two should be enough. Here comes the backup gunner. Oh, sweet. We got a victory. Oh, how good. And now that it counts as friendly land, we can, of course, armor up, heal up, and continue to move through. This army should be enough by itself. Insta-resolve. Insta-freaking-success. And we picked up an extra wonder in Harappa as well. I wonder how that happened. Great. Looks like there's one more city to go and we've got some gunners on the way. I wonder if we can do this before the war closes out. That'll be... That'll be the tricky thing here. It is timing. Alrighty. War concluded. Slightly too early, but that's alright. Uh, can we just vassalize you? Yes. Let's do it. You are now my vassal. But... Also, for my trouble... Um... I'm just going to randomly steal this. What did I get? Oh, nice. I'll take it. I'll take it. Plus one food per faith from Machu Picchu is definitely something I should have got a long time ago. <laughs> so, uh, again, I'm just going to get all hands on to get that finished in a turn. Or, you know, as many as we need. Interesting. We can now liberate... Cities. So if you're like, oh, the city's awful, it's really dragging me down, you can just pump it out here on the city's view. I like that a lot. Likewise with the outpost, it's all just really simply easy there. I'm not sure if it was there before or not. Uh, I've never noticed this overview either. This is very useful. Look at this. We can control all of our cities from right here. That is great. That is really good. Um, that's a really good UI improvement. I like that a lot. My plan here has changed somewhat. I found myself in a position where I'm very strong, very profitable, and very influential. Uh, completely unlike real life. So what I'm going to do here is uh, declare a surprise war on the strongest other empire in the game. Uh, I seem to have just sort of homped up the world. So let's keep doing that. Here's an army I prepared slightly earlier. And here is a co here's two cultural wonders. Look at this. Here's that lighthouse of Alexandria that we were talking about and dreaming about. Uh, in another life, could pillage these. That's kind of funny. Let's pillage that. That'll that'll really grind their gears. One thing that I've noticed I'm very short on is science, and that's because apart from a little bit of science generation from the Ethiopians, their unique sort of hilltop garrison, there really isn't any other way to, uh, or any other special way, I should say, to generate science in the Cultures of Africa DLC. So something to bear in mind if you're playing through and watching through this video and looking forward to playing the game yourself, might want to build a few extra science quarters than you normally would because you're going to need them. You're going to need them. Hey, look, we just sort of swapped places. They sent six boats that way and I sent four gunners this way. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I'm not really afraid of those boats, to be perfectly honest. 
Come fight me, I dare you. Look at the strange cluster of holy sites! <laughs> what? <laughs> what is this? It's a pillager's dream! Amazing. Okay, well, it is actually going to take us a few turns to walk around to Babylon, so let's just destroy this wonder while we're here. That'll teach him. Alright, we're going to stand atop Babylon with our gunners and just sort of... <laughs> just sort of hover here while we pillage this for two turns while we get everybody else in place. I'm going to send some units to this city as well. We're going to try for a very quick, fast, easy Cultures of Africa capture here. This person's just left everything completely undefended. <laughs> like there's just nothing here. This is ridiculous. Okay, there's a world wonder successfully deleted, right? Not even burnt, just deleted. We just destroyed it. We could do the same to the Lighthouse of Alexandria, but we've got bigger fish to fry. Babylon has lost a whole load of population. I think now's the time to strike. Let's show our Nigerian might. Insta resolve on Babylon, insta success. You know you're winning by a lot when you insta resolve and you're not afraid to insta resolve. Uh, I'm actually going to do it here as well. Stuff it. Look at me go! <laughs> Two down. Uh, anyone else want to perish this turn? I think you do. Insta success. Oh, we were just one short of completing the whole package this turn. Imagine that! <laughs> one turn, there's another empire fighting for victory. Next turn, the Nigerians turned around and absolutely whomped them. Amazing. All hands on... D-E-C-K as we move to Sabah to take the final city that stands in our way. Can we do it with these five units? Maybe. And if we can't, plenty more where that came from. Let's give it a whirl. Hey! <laughs> Woohoo! That is ridiculous. Hey, and look, here's our new harbour. You thought you weren't going to see it. You can. It's an oil refinery, essentially. Let's see what it yields. Wow, you can build it in a lake. <laughs> I love building districts in lake, and there you go, a free strategic resource. Now don't forget, this is a strategic resource, so it benefits from science districts nearby. Perhaps a cheeky way to enforce extra science on your empire, or anything else that benefits from being adjacent to strategic resources. You've now got a way to manually design and control that. So while the districts themselves don't necessarily uh, net a lot of yield, the power that comes from being able to, one, control where your strategics are, and two, perhaps, have just enough oil to actually build your uniques, which can sometimes, depending on the map settings, be really challenging. Uh, I. I think should maybe uh, put us in a position here with the Nigerians. They're actually a fairly decent culture. Oh look, we're close to victory in the war. I will make you become my vessel. And for my trouble, I'm going to take the rat. Take the rat. Boom. Eat it. Okay, so they are restored back to their former glory. We nag. <laughs> we steal literally just one little outpost uh, for my trouble. I'll admit it seems like overkill, but look, I can plant a forest attach it to the Ethiopian capital. Everything's coming up middle house. That is amazing. And boom! I accidentally vassalized the entire world. <laughs> uh, if I skip through this cutscene and we have a look at how each era went, you'll notice that I moved through the eras very quickly, so that was one thing. Uh, and then the second thing I would say is the fact that I went real aggressive real fast and destroyed people. Let's have a look at the charts and you can see there was no competition. This has been my first showcase edited Let's Play guide, whatever you want to call it, for Humankind's Cultures of Africa DLC. If you enjoyed, please do stick around. I'll see you in the next one.